everybody. Um, first of all, thank you for taking the time out of your busy lives to come here tonight and snack on desserts and talk about things on the town warrant. It's a wonderful little thing. Uh, an exciting time in Conway. You may have to bring the paper bag so you don't hyperventilate, but we have a race for the select board. We have three candidates, which is pretty much an amazing thing. We don't have the placard Steerfield did, but it seems like we're getting close. <laughs> so, at this time, I'm going to give each of the three candidates two minutes to say what you're well. Wow, two minutes is plenty enough time to get yourself in trouble. So, I'll, I will. Allow them two minutes. Bob, would you like to start? Bob Baker? Oh, thanks. Hi, I think most of you know me. There's a few new faces in town. I'm Robert Baker. I'm running for selectman again. I have been in the town of County for 73 years. I have been highway fire chief for 44 years. I was highway superintendent for 20 years. So I know about most all the budgets in the town and how the town operates. Uh, I have kept a very, as you can want to believe or not, if you look at the fire budget over the years, I've kept it at a very minimal operational budget as we could. If you want to compare the county's budget, fire budget with other towns, it's about 20 to 30 percent lower than anybody else's. And we have a very good force, very active force. We have 18 volunteer firefighters, uh, so I know how to keep budgets low. Uh, I somebody asked me the other day why I was thinking of running run for Suckman again, and I said I think the biggest concern in the county right now is to, to be able to do more for our seniors. We have a lot of seniors on, on fixed incomes, most of them, and tax bills keep going up and up. And I think we need to find more and more ways to offset. The cost for the seniors. I understand we have a couple programs going on right now in town, but I think we need to do more because, uh, to me, being a senior myself on a fixed income, I know what it's like. Um, and I'm sure the rest of you are seniors on fixed income know too. That it doesn't get any easier; it gets harder every year for us. So we need to try to do whatever we can do to help get the seniors in a little better situation. Thank you. Um, Elaine Campbell, not quite 70 years, almost 30 years I've been in Conway. I've been involved in um, all sorts of service in Conway. I was on ConCom for I think nine years. I've been on school committee. I actually can't count how many years, a lot of years. Um, I know the biggest budget in town is the school uh, and we try to be very reasonable with that as much as we can because school budgets really depend on um, union teacher union contract. Our biggest expense is the teachers, of course, which we want to invest in. Um, this is a gem of a school, and I think we do a very good job of taking care of it. Both my kids went to the school, um, and it really is. It's also our emergency shelter, um, and we have to be very cautious and kind to the school. Right now, we have um, we started a fund to prepare for things that might break. We started that quite a while ago. I think the first thing we started for was saving for the furnace that might go someday. Um, and actually, it's been a really smart move. I think now the town is looking at doing things like that from a warrant article too. Um, so, I'm also a clinical psychologist. Uh, what town can't use a clinical psychologist, right? Uh, which means uh, I'm a trained listener. Um, I don't think a select board member should just have their own agenda. I think they listen, need to listen to all the residents of the town uh, and be concerned for what their views and their concerns are. Um, I agree, seniors definitely need some attention. Um, and we need to think out of the box a lot uh, because costs do keep getting higher. I think we need to be responsible while all 
also continue to invest in our town because I'm sure all of you are here because you know what a gem this town is. Um, <clears throat> only 30 years, but that 30 years is, uh, I mean, I brag all the time on how much I appreciate this town. I, I drive every day to Holyoke, um, and when I hit that sign that says Conway, I just go, oh, I'm back Conway. So I'm very invested in helping take care of this town. Thanks very much. been on the select board six years now uh, before that I've been on been on frontier and Conway grammar school 12 uh, a long time um, been on Conway historical society president for years before that um, you know, my, my, my kid all went through all the schools in the two uh, yeah so uh, you know I'm, I'm glad to hear you know everybody else say that they want to help seniors uh, and that they want to keep costs down. I think when I'll, I'll just speak about what I did just in the past year. The the, the person that brought forward the the concept of you know, uh, the senior tax property write-off um, was me. That's what we voted on in December. The the the, the, um, the, the person that started the program uh, for. Conway Senior Transportation Service, the Conway Senior Uber, a one-of-a-kind program that doesn't exist anywhere else in the state. That was me. Um, the, you know, the person that got the Mass in Motion grant, um, uh, the Mass in Motion program fleshed out with, with uh, representatives from the key committees in town, uh, uh, planning the senior Senior, senior prom, June first, the day of the town meeting uh, at, the, at the town library, uh, things like that. So, uh, and the person that got the Council of Aging to increase their request for the first time in many, many years in the budget from twelve hundred, which they've been flat at for like twenty years, to three thousand dollars, so that they can get more um, uh, nurse nursing and foot care clinic stuff. So. Um, so you know, it, 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 on the one hand, yeah, you don't you don't want to have your own agenda, but on the other hand, you have to have your own goals that you're willing to just do and undertake. You, you know, use the position that you have to do initiatives, etc., and make things happen. Um, I've, uh, I've been on the budget committee, of the schools uh, for 12 years, besides doing these budgets for six years, and I think when you look at this budget, this budget is calls for a 2.98 increase with significant cost of living adjustments, every significant proper uh, uh, job increase, uh, salary increases for the positions that needed salary increases so we could be competitive with other towns. Um, the, the budget is a request, uh, is uh, a, a, a mirror, if you will, of, of the, the select board and the select board chairs. Okay, goals. So I'm gonna ask you. Right. So I think it's a good budget. <laughs> The first one almost killed our new chief. <laughs> okay, the article with the most checks by it was eight, by the way, believe it or not, is Article 15. And Article 15 states, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds or otherwise provide $9,950 for preliminary study 
of town street lights by an energy consultant with the goal of saving money and reducing our carbon footprint or take any action relative thereto. So I wants to say anything? Well, we have at least two members here. We do. Oh, yeah. So um, I'm Beth Gershman from the Sustainability. Could you project a little bit? Yeah, come over here. Come up here. Come up there. Yeah. Come on. Come on. I'll stand near Jody. So um, I'm Beth Gershman, and this is Jody Lolly, and we are two members of the fairly recently formed sustainability committee. The select board asked us to take up the issue, the question of, uh, of transitioning the streetlights in our town to LED streetlights, which will save energy and money. Uh, seems fairly straightforward. Turns out, not so straightforward. Um, <laughs> Uh, just to make it a simpler, simpler question, Jody, just feel free to jump yeah, in any time here. So, uh, Eversource, which everyone is familiar with, offers a program to do this. So it seems like okay, we'll just turn it over to them. Um, the question is, is that they have one kind of street light, one kind of LED, one kind of wattage, uh, and people um, have reported that this is glary and uh, non-dimmable and the color choices are uh, very harsh um, and they burn out, <coughs> and they burn out faster yeah. so and there is a cost per uh, light of ma yearly maintenance if you went with the Eversource program so apparently they do it for free but then it costs more in the long run it's free what a surprise <laughs> wherever well, people, people are not too surprised so Jody and I and the Sustainability Committee started looking into this more seriously. We started out by making, uh, creating a map of all the streetlights in town. There are 67, by the way, although Chris and I, maybe there's 68. Yeah, I think there's 68. So, <laughs> which is also, can we just say by comparison, how many streetlights does Ashfield have? 17. Yeah. So what we was that? 17. 17. Uh, how many streetlights does? Um, Shelburne. Shelburne yeah. has 100. We've been very 100. fortunate in that they have done a tremendous job studying this issue and they have given all of their information to us. We've attended yes. meetings there. They're like so available for anyone who has questions yeah. about it and yeah. the town just overwhelmingly <laughs> voted to support their proposals. Shelburne. 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 Which includes Shelburne. 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 Yeah. yeah. So they've given us, as Jody said, they've given us a tremendous trail to follow, more than a trail, actually a highway to follow, uh, with a, a lot of um, information and uh, data. Um, and the first step in this process is hiring an, an energy consultant to take a look at the existing lights and, the, and make some recommendations for what um, what companies would provide what you might want, because there's more than one company providing different kind of lighting, um, depending upon um, what you ask them to assess for you. Uh, members of our committee have met with, um, with Ron Sweet and our um, police chief as well, whose name I just uh, uh, done. Done. Right. Thank done. you. Thank you so much. Um, and they put in their recommendations. We would anticipate meeting with people in the village of the, in, in down, you know, the center of town for their opinions as well about about streetlights that they might perhaps want to turn off. I'm getting that sense from people. Look at that person, very much so. Um, and uh, a number of people in town have raised the issue of dark sky, you know, the dark sky sort of guidelines with us, and that is something that, of course, we would take into consideration whether or not we formally adopted it. We would, as well as uh, going with a street light that is dimmable, because there's a lot of good reasons for that, and a good like color range and long lasting and energy efficient, you would want them that are shielded so they go down rather than out. So there's less bleeding out onto people's uh, <coughs> homes and in their bedroom windows, mm -hmm. all those things. Um, 
that's where we're at with this. But the first step that we're coming to town meeting to ask for is nine, not to exceed ten thousand dollars, ninety nine hundred dollars for um, a consultant to, and and we have been looking into working with the same uh, company that worked with Shelver. And just to add to that. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Right. Uh, sorry. To add to that, I know the discussion had come up before, before he, even I was a member, I know you two had talked about it. I did want to see if we could get grants to be a dark uh, sky community. Yeah. So kind of push this again, right? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm for it, so, yeah, you know, a lot of this is about to see what lights we need and what we don't need. And beautifying a town is not only what you can see during the day, mm -hmm. but at night as well. It'll help wildlife, of course get rid of the phosphorus bulbs, replace them with LED bulbs. Like Beth said, the caps, so the light faces down where it needs to go instead of out, mm -hmm. which is a huge part of yeah. what you need to do to become a dark sky community. Yeah. And on the, on the plus side, it will save energy and it will save money. Yes, so, in the long run, it will save money. But to get there, we have to spend money to get there. Well, also, um, I mean, Bear Need knows a lot more about this, but there is money available in the Green Communities Program that we would be eligible to apply for grants. Yes. For this. So it wouldn't just be coming from yeah. the time budget as it exists now. I mean, in fact, for the $9,000 study, I, there is some funding available. In the so it's just a question of, you know, getting started. And as I said, we have a huge amount of information, and I'm, more, I'm, I'm happy to share that with anybody who's yeah. interested. Um, it's, uh, we have a copy of the report that Shelburne presented to their uh, town meeting that was approved, so if anyone's interested. And, and I just want to say that they, they had a, like a, a final dollar amount, a figure, an annual figure that they estimated that they would save, which was pretty significant. I can't remember what it is now, but yeah, I can't remember what it was. Mary had a question. Um, are the lights in the school parking lot considered street lights because they have been something I've complained about for decades and they're uh, way too bright all night? I, I know, I didn't see them on that list. I don't know, they're so not on the list. list. Yeah. Yeah. And they be added because if you talk about dark sky, the brightest thing on this end well, of town is we'll, that parking lot at 11 o'clock at night. Well, I think this is um, not just a question for us, but for the school committee and uh, as well, for yeah. sure. I think. What do you think? Take school committee, committee members. Take school school committee. Take school committee. I mean, this, I've talked to people for years about yeah. this. And yeah. Uh, yes. I expect that there's going to be far fewer lights at the end of this process. For example, I live on Academy Hill Road, and I un and there's five lights on Academy Hill Road, which is a very short light. Now I understand. I I've only been living there for six years, but people who've been around much longer. I've learned that the reason for those those lights was when the old school was up the hill there and kids had to walk, you know, when it got dark in the winter. So I would say on Academy Hill Road at the very most you need one. So yeah, so there's some historical reasons why we have the lighting that we do in town and um, that's part of what the uh, energy consultant would help us look at and, and focus on. Um, Bob Armstrong had a question. I'm shocked the number is 68. Uh, yeah. Is it yeah, possible we to summarize I, where they are? We have a list. Yeah. I can send we you have a list. Mostly, mostly yeah. on 116. There yeah, are a bunch of 116 as well. Waitley Road, Academy Hill Road. Mm -hmm. There are reasons, of course, uh, that I'm sure Don and uh, can speak to about why you'd want them at intersections and things like that. There's, a, there's safety reasons involved in this as well. So um, we can't turn them all off. <laughs> Some of us would like to, but we can't. Yeah. 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 Yes. So this consultant would help, would work with your committee to figure out a proposal. They, they do the initial study, the proposal. They come back to us with their recommendations, and then we would be ready to go out to bid. <coughs> The they, out. they look at every single street light and, and, and report on each one, like, should it stay, should it leave, you know, um, what, what kind of lighting would be best in this area. And I, I believe they're also willing to talk to community, local, you know, no, uh, One of the things that would come out of this likely is um, 
Oh, no, that's too complicated. We might talk about that. that never mind. <laughs> I don't want to go down that road. <laughs> but there, yeah. there will be public forums. Great. I'm sure. Once, yes. once the report comes out, yeah, never mind. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh. Somebody. I. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's in the report. Yeah. report. I don't remember. Do you remember the money? What they're spending initially to get to their... No, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't know. Was it okay. like... Is it available on their account? Yeah. yeah, we have... I think it's actually in the recorder. Yeah. It's in the recorder. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm there. I apologize for not bringing that information. I'm sorry. And they have a Bring it to town meeting. Yeah. Um, this this to company me. that we're proposing to use is the same company that they used, and they were very pleased yeah. with their work. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Good. So we don't have to Great. bring them with them. Thanks. Thanks. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you. 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 Thank <laughs> okay, I'm just going to clear everybody up on witnesses before you start to see if the town will vote to appropriate or reserve for later appropriation monies from the Community Preservation Fund with each item considered a separate appropriation or take any other action thereto. You can address. Right. So I'm only here to talk about the pickleball courts, not the other CPA stuff. So my name is Jan Warner. Most, most of you know me. I'm the treasurer and tax collector. And I've recently joined the Park and Recs Committee. Um, and you know, it's always a shortage of volunteers. So in about three minutes, I became the chair of the Park and Rec Committee. And um, so what, what brought me to it, actually, is pickleball. So a little over two years ago, we, I started um, gathering up a group of people to come play pickleball in Conway. As you may know, it's uh, you know, a big hit across the nation. It's been in Florida for quite some time, and it's just most recently become popular in the Northeast. And in Conway, we're loving it. So right now we have over 80 people that are regularly involved in our open play sessions. We play down on the um, the ball field during the summer. On the we started out on the two basketball courts. We had some lines painted out, and we've expanded. And now we're taking over some of the tennis courts. And so. Um, just to back up a little, we also have a Facebook community, and we just reached 200 members on our Facebook community, so that was kind of a big milestone for us. But all winter long, you may have noticed that we've been playing in the Town Hall Gymnasium. The lights were on uh, virtually every night up there. We had play sessions end to end, sometimes three in one night. People sign up and play, and um, you know, I'm not running for a select board, uh, but you noticed your three select board members were very concerned about seniors. And this is a program that involves seniors. It involves mm -hmm. people of all ages. We've seen uh, some kids come out to play, some seniors play, and it's a lot of fun. So we quickly grew to a size that we are overtaking the other space. Let me pass, sorry, instead of holding this, this is our uh, sketch and I wanted to pass it around. Great, I'm going to put a projection in town meeting, but So I'm going to uh, project a sketch at town meetings, uh, you know, on the board so that you'll see it. But uh, so, let's see, where was I? So we're planning on using community preservation funds. Probably most of you here know uh, what community preservation funds are. There, uh, it's money that we've already saved, put aside. Currently we have in the neighborhood of $1.5 million saved. It comes from your tax bill. It's 3% added onto your tax bill and we've been saving it since somewhere around 2005, 2007. It came in. It's and we, matching funds. 
And uh -huh. right. So in addition to your tax money, we get some uh, additional funding from the state. It's not exactly 50-50, but we do get um, some money from the state to make up that number too. So we have uh, estimated our courts to cost about $150,000, which is an extremely low price for four courts, which is what we're proposing because we regularly fill four courts. Um, and the reason we're able to pull it off at such a low price is that our highway manager, Ron, is uh, willing to do all the site work and work with his uh, town bids um, and do you know, the dirt moving and everything right up to the black top. And then I've gone out and got uh, three different quotes from uh, tennis and court companies for the painting, the netting, et cetera. So uh, just kind of roughly broken down, about 93,000 of it is for site work and about 57,000 for the fence, nets, trees, et cetera. So, oh, I should have told you the location. Sorry, like one of the most important things. So the, I'm terrible at directions. Right back there. <laughs> thank you. Um, we're planning on putting it behind the grammar school. So you would access it through the grammar school driveway and come right around the front of the school to the back. And then it would have its little uh, own driveway entrance, its own parking area um, off the school. So it wouldn't affect any school parking. Now we've met with uh, the um, principal and the superintendent, the police chief, uh, all about safety concerns. Because there are some safety concerns with the additional traffic that may come and go from the school. And you know we've, we've heard it from parents and we've heard it from uh, staff members. And we never want to say that there's no concern, that there's no problem here. What we want to tell you is that we're, we feel that we've addressed it and um, we're proposing, and this was actually Kristen's idea, putting in a couple of speed bumps. People can decide if they like them or not. Generally, speed bumps get taken away, but we're, we're willing to give it a try. So um, we're talking about removable speed bumps so they can be plowed, they get pulled off and Ron can still plow in the winter. Um, and so we're proposing two speed bumps, one down by the playground and another one on the bad corner as you, as you come around the grammar school, there's a little bit of a blind corner there. And in addition, a uh, solar powered speed sign as you come in to identify your speed and it'll flash slow down or, you know, speed up maybe. No. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Uh, in talking with Kristen, uh, our principal, and Darius Modesto, superintendent, they feel that the safety concerns have been adequately addressed, and they've told me in a meeting that um, there's no reason for them to stop this, and you know they support going forward with it, and they're willing to speak about that at town meeting. Um, let's see, what have I left out? Oh, how about timing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the timing would be hopefully sometime uh, this summer to be finished by winter. We do have one little catch in the whole program, and that is that we have a, a small personnel, I wouldn't say small, but we have a personnel issue between Ron and the select board. So at this time, he's not willing to do the work. He kind of withdrew from it. But we really believe that that's going to be resolved, and I'm going to be asking everybody to have faith that that will be resolved. And worst case scenario, from our end, of course, there's a lot of you know problems with that. But from our end, if it's not resolved and we voted the money, the money will just go right back to the CPA committee because we need Ron to even start the project. So we're never going to get started and be stuck. We need him to start. So uh, I've gone outside to some bigger construction companies and asked them what our courts would cost if we didn't have our own people doing the work, and it would be in the neighborhood of 350000 So it's because of prevailing wages and state bidding and so forth. Um, it's pretty big savings. So without that, our, our project would just not go forward and the money would be returned. Go ahead. It would not. The trails will stay okay. just as they are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What um, about the sound? Yes. I, I was.
coming out of town hall and I heard pop, 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 yeah. pop. And I was quite a ways away. I mean, I was. So, so, yeah, I'll let you speak just a minute. But so far, we've had absolutely zero complaints down at the town, town ball field. So, uh, people are used to hearing noise down there. People are used to hearing noise over here by that, that highway department. In fact, it's going to be much louder than our pickleball noise will ever be. We're planning on surrounding it uh, with some buffering trees and maybe some built up dirt. Um, Ron's going to see what he can do about that. And so Mary McClintock is the closest neighbor there, right. and we've spoken with her about it. Right. So I'm Mary McClintock. I live directly downhill from this. This will be between the highway garage, mountains of, of materials, et cetera, that, where there's work 24-7 and loud trucks. And um, and then my house down the hill. I came when I first heard about it. I came and chatted with Dan and the others about it, and I was concerned because I get I kept hearing about issues of sound. I think particularly in really built up areas where there are multiple courts, there can be issues with sound. And so then I went down and hung out by the by the ball field when on our busiest day ever. On our busiest day ever, <laughs> and I stood at the parking lot, the lower parking lot, and I listened from there, and then I went and stood right next to it and listened from there, and my 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 thought is, this is a lot quieter than the highway garage, <laughs> um, and that it wasn't an issue. The other concern I have, which I think is part of, is, been, is being worked on in the design, is that that hillside is a, it's got, um, the overall hillside has multiple isolated wetlands and seeps and I'm downhill of that and with like this last year and the high water table a lot of water comes down that hill and uh, particularly with the highway department having made more impervious surface by spreading stuff out the concern about if you have more paved surface is this going to cause more runoff happening quickly. So I think in part of the design they're working on stormwater issues and retention issues because that's that was another concern of mine personally. But right. so it's not going to resolve the problem that you currently have. No, it's but not. we're not going to add to right. that's so the the like perimeter drainage around the court so that no additional water flow. Right. Will so come that's down right. So not make not make <laughs> that situation worse. But yeah. I mean otherwise it is you know yeah. it seems yeah. so what I also wanted to just uh, Hold on just one second. Um, we've gotten a lot of questions like, well, you know, should you maybe just don't play during school hours? And I thought that we would, uh, and the principal agreed to this, just not restrict it from the beginning, but it will be widely passed around the pickleball community. And we have actually a very tight community. We have Facebook, we have emails, we have signups. There's a lot of ways to get in touch with our pickleballs, but pickleballers but let people know that they probably shouldn't come during pick up and drop off time, avoid those times. And generally, anyway, our popular play times are later in the afternoon after school. We play four to seven right now. So we don't really see it being any large impact on the school traffic during the school day. Go ahead. Um, well, you probably said this in the beginning, but are these courts to replace the ones that are over there now? Yes. So we would completely vacate from the ball field area so the basketball players and the tennis players can have their space back. Well, yeah. I also live very close to it, and I must say, sometimes it does bother me. I, I did, the noise, yeah. 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 But I understand there are some balls that you can get that are a bit quieter. I, I remember, you know, in reading about yeah. other cities. They're, start, they're, they're starting to yeah. make quiet. There's yeah. paddles you can buy that are quieter, mm -hmm. too. They're yeah. Yeah. just how popular they get, how right. fast, we'll right. see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Baker? Oh. Two questions for you, Jan. First one, of your 80 members that you have now, how many are town residents? A good majority of them. Okay. Not all of them. We welcome players from all of our surrounding towns. We have several players that come pretty regularly. As do our Conway players go down to Deerfield or Shelby Falls. That's a really wonderful Could thing. Could you have a number for town meeting? The actual number? Yeah. Sure. Okay. My other question is, do you intend on lighting these courts? No lights. None at all? No. Not now or in the future? No. I never say never, but that's not any immediate plan. So you couldn't play at night. My only concern is Mary is, is, is concerned about the lighting out here. 
if you lit that up, I'd really don't like right. it. Too so if it ever were to get lights added, it'd have to go to town meeting vote. So um, that's not the plan right now. We understand the, the need for dark skies and uh, people's peace and quiet in the evening, and that's, that's not the intention. Thank you. Um, I was wondering about, you know, sort of being in the center of town, there's like a sort of visibility and a, um, like an ease of sort of dropping by and welcoming new members. And yes. so if you move sort of out of town to this like relatively invisible location, how do you, do you have thoughts about how you will like continue to invite and welcome people to? Yes, I mean, we, will, we have our Facebook, we put it in the, um, the newsletter quite frequently. Um, and then just I, with the word of mouth, a lot well, of people and you are, have an email the, list. I mean, I, I don't play, but I'm on the email list, so I'm yeah. interested. Yeah, know, so. we have a huge yeah. email list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have quite a few uh, staff in the school to play, too. Yes. So it's quite yeah. quite the bonding activity. And the school yes. gym teacher is interested in bringing the kids out there. And oh, cool. So, yeah, so the kids will be able to use it. And the, the, so the design of it is such that it leaves it open to other uses as well. So we made it, uh, the design will be similar to how the tennis courts are, where there's um, permanent fencing at the end and then nets that come across. So say, I mean, I just thought of examples. If you wanted to have a concert out there, you can pull open the nets, you can set up a band, people can sit on the lawn and have a concert. That's not why we're building it, but we wanted to leave it open just in case. Yep. How many parking spots you can provide? Oh, I, f I lost count. It's somewhere around 20. My only concern is. Don't quote me on that, though. It's 15, 20. This is emergency access for fire apparatus if this building catches fire. Yeah, we will not be parking There's in the, the school parking lot. The lines. boiler room is the most highly yeah. part of the There's building that will catch fire. There's plenty of there for overflow if we fill our spots. We can even put up signs if you want, but. Well, we won't be using the school party. Mm -hmm. Can you speak a little bit more about um, Ron potentially doing the site work and is, is he going to be using town equipment and how is that all going to work So out? yes, so he will be using town equipment and he will uh, we'll be purchasing the materials but we will be using the current bids that he has in place. So he bids out materials for the whole year. So we can take advantage of that. We don't have to go out to bid and everything for his materials. We don't have to go out to bid for the internal labor that we do. Um, so that simplifies things quite a bit. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I just, I, it's confusing because he's, he's doing this on the time. So he'll be doing this uh, for overtime. So it'll be not during his regular work day. We'll be paying him overtime out of the CPA funding. So him or his employees. It's a town project, so he's covered as a town employee making all the time. And the other question, you mentioned the mm -hmm. trees. How are you going about choosing the trees? Do you have any recommendations? We haven't chosen any. Yeah. We talk about that later. Sure. Native trees. Yes, native. Yeah. Okay, any, any, anybody else? Thank you very much. Okay, come home for fun. <laughs> Hi, Donnie Bates. Hello, sir. Hi. The next article is Article 11. By the way, Article 11 see if the town will vote to transfer $85,000 from capital stabilization or otherwise provide for a police cruiser, including upfitting, or take any action relative thereto. Do you want me to do it? I, you can I, start it. You can start and I'll, I'll join in. Yeah, I was, all right. I'm Phyllis Crane, 320 Main Pullman Road. I'm the chair of the Capital Police Committee with Bob Armstrong and Chris Walter. So the need for this um, cruiser was brought to our attention when Chief Bates came to us and made a request because it turns out that in the entire town of Conway, there is and you have how many officers? Four? We got four or five. Five. Which I thought, I thought that was really interesting because right after we found this out, I was driving up 116 with my husband down here, who's on the finance committee, um, and you were doing a detail. Like, 
like on 116, like right where the Conway Millstone is. Yep. It had something to do with, you know, on 116. And what was interesting was you were there, one of your officers was there, and your, the cruiser was there, and there was another car there. And was that like someone's personal vehicle? Yep. So I thought that was an interesting dilemma because it was right on 116 where it turns up and it goes past the bank. And it occurred to me that in the best safety scenario, that should have been a cruiser because it was official police business. And if you're coming down, if you were coming in the opposite direction that day, what you would have seen is you would have seen someone's private car stopped on the side of the road without knowing why it was stopped on the side of the road. Whereas if there had been a, a, a police vehicle there, it would have been obvious that it was on police business. So one of the things that we do in capital improvements is this is an improvement that we made this year with Veronique's help, and it was it was really useful, I think, is all of the department's head, heads have to make a capital request on a specific form so that everybody's on the same playing field. And another innovation that we did this year is we now have a capital improvement schedule, which is a large spreadsheet that Chris Waldo put together that basically <coughs> takes the capital improvements request out several years. So now that the town can, the people on the committee and anybody in the town can actually see what capital improvements requests are coming up in the next couple of years and no, nobody should be surprised. And the other thing that we do on the committee is one of our metrics is <coughs> the department heads, you know, Chief Bates and other people, is they have to tell us their need. And I have to say personally, as my experience in the chair, all of the town departments that make capital improvement requests, the highway department, the fire department, the police department, there it is a genuine need. It's not a nice to have. They have to demonstrate that it's either for public safety, town improvement, or something related at, at a large um, in a large way that benefits everybody in the town because Everybody has to rely on the police department at some point. Everybody has to rely on the roads being allowed. So when we when we uh, when we make the recommendation for capital improvements, that really is the metric that we use. You were going to say something, Chris? No, you did a great job. I mean, <laughs> take all of that out. The biggest issue is we have absolutely no contingency plan if True. the cruiser's not in use. And we have five officers. Right. So even if you take the officers away, we only have one officer, you only have one cruiser. And what happens when that cruiser gets in a crash or breaks yeah. down? Yeah. Um, I know Kenny had a problem a couple years or a few years back where the cruiser was in um, uh, being serviced for a month and I think he got almost 40 calls during that oh, time. Right. 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 And luckily there was nothing severe, but that could have been extremely bad. Um, uh, you know, we have a stability fund for the, a new pumper. We have a stability fund for uh, a, a new ambulance. And, uh, stabilization, I'm sorry, stability? Stabilization <laughs> fund for a new pumper, a new ambulance. And we have to keep increasing every year because the cost is increasing at a rapid level. So that's another thing is even if we, you know, if, if we get the funding for it, we're still probably waiting eight months to a year to receive the cruiser, um, and the cost could potentially go up by then. Right. We still um, have a situation where we have five officers. So the, the money that's being asked is not just for the cruiser, but for the upfitting of it as well, because obviously you can't just buy it. How many hours are on the current cruiser? I, idle hours? Yeah. 400,000. No, 400,000 miles. The equivalent, the equivalent of 400,000 400, miles. On the existing cruiser? On the existing, yeah. yes. For I, when, you, when you factor in idle hours. So with that cruiser, that becomes the backup cruiser? Yes, it would. Yes. Yes, so there will be two. Right. That would be used as a, in a contingency. Right? Correct. Yes. Or if two officers are needed. Yeah, like on a detail or something. Right. right. Yeah. So they're not using personal vehicles on a detail. Right. Which and I'm not even sure. The Select Board and Finance Committee just approved the four thousand dollar repair bill for the existing cruiser. Four thousand. Four thousand. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, it was. Yeah, it was. 
Oh, it's right. It was around $4,000. That's not the first repair bill that we've had this year. Right. That, that was an unexpected. Yes, sir. In our last meeting, I think it was you passed around a document. <coughs> I don't want to try to remember the numbers of how many cruisers the towns around us have. Yes. Do you have any of those numbers? I believe Asheville is three or four. Three. Got them right here. Yes. Which one do you want to know? Well, uh, we'll go with Asheville. Similar towns. Asheville's got two cruisers. Um, Goshen's got three. Coleraine, two. Plainfield has four. Wow. Uh, Williamsburg's got three. Uh, Waverly's got four. Um, I won't say Deerfield. <laughs> Hatfield's got three. Buckley. Buckland Shelburne has seven. Gill. Gill has three. Uh, Nobody with one. Well, we are the only one that I've looked at, and I've got quite a list that I called. Um, we are the only one with one car. And when you look at the geographical area that we cover, if you take out Buckland Shelburne, which merged, take out um, Leverett Wendell, which merged, and Berniston Leiden, we're the third largest square footage behind Ashfield and Coleraine. How many does Leverett have? Leverett and Wendell, they've got four cruisers. Oh, you need a couple more. Sixty-four. <laughs> no, I don't want a couple. Just one. Sixty-four square miles. Sixty-four square miles. Yeah. And it's also sixty-four road miles. According to Wikipedia, it's thirty-seven point nine. Oh, I'm sorry, it's 64 road miles, 37.9 square miles. If you take Buckland Shelburne, for instance, combined, they're 43.3. Two towns in the And they have seven. And they've got seven. But you also you remember, they combined two police departments, so their numbers could be a little skewed there. Compelling numbers. Yeah. I think this is a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> that but you know, they just make the decision tonight. Does anyone have any other questions on it? Oh, it was a good job. Yeah. Very yes. well. yeah. no, I, have a question, I have a question about, um, I know, because I work for the federal government, so if, if you use your personally owned vehicle, you know, that's like an exception. Like, you don't usually do that. And I, I assume, like, does per, are personally owned vehicles like covered by town insurance or something when you have to? I don't know, and I don't want to find out. <laughs> that was a good I like my pickup. <laughs> I don't want it smashed because then I can't go camping. <laughs> Any other questions, thoughts, concerns? I, I'm curious yes. how many, like, I mean, obviously there was a time when they were you and another officer out at the same time, but generally, how many officers are working at once? Just one, typically, but if we have like a parade in town, we've been relying heavily on state police. I've come up when I was working in full time in Wakeley, I've come up to help with parades. Um, we've had Deerfield recently come up to help us out. So we wouldn't have to rely on, on outside towns for that. We have the two cars. We said we're shipping with week A in Deerfield. Nope. No, we have a mutual aid and okay. we all work really well with each other. Nice job. Okay, since we have since we have more time left, next article is, is actually a tie, two with four checks apiece. We can either talk about the uh, purchase of a rubber tire compact loader, or we can talk about the purchase of a plow truck. Let's talk about a boat. So, yeah, so we All right, I can give uh, They are 9 and 10. All right, so I can give a synopsis. Let me just say one thing. That green handwriting is mine. That was a correction that I made to facilitate this discussion. I was pointing. You want me to talk about the pickup truck and you can talk about the loader? Yeah, perfect. Okay. So, uh, the pickup truck. Um, the current pickup truck we have is the only passenger vehicle that the highway department owns. It has been in and out of the repair shop for years, uh, for multiple weeks at a time. It's 20 years old, 20 year old vehicle. 
Um, it is used for multiple things to include attaching trailers, to move equipment, whether that's the um, wood chipper, the wood box, or um, any other various things that need to go on to a, a trailer. Um, right now the vehicle still has issues. Um, unfortunately our super has been using his personal vehicle, his second personal vehicle actually. He used a truck that he had that subsequently broke down and has been using a van. So if you see a little maroon van running around town, that's our super's van that's going around and checking out the manholes. I, I know I've seen it go up and down the road. Um, so again, this is this isn't even a contingency issue here. This is more of we have a broken piece of equipment. It's outdated. It's 20 years old. Um, this is a major need for the highway department. Um, do you have anything to add to that? I was just going to say, if you went to town meeting last year, it's it was. It was. Yep, and the prices again just keep going up and up and up. So if it would if it would have won last year or, or won, if it would have gotten voted last year, it would have been what twenty five thousand less than this year. <coughs> yes, sir. You may want to check your age on the truck. Two thousand eight. I retired in two thousand and thirteen and it was purchased after I retired. Okay. I'll check that out. I have it as a 2008 dog. Was it bought new? It was bought new after I got it. It was bought new. Please so. Okay. How many miles on the truck? Let's see. Uh, 2008. I don't have the miles, but I'm. Does, does, does anyone remember that, that during the time you needed 120,000? I believe so. Yeah, so. I know it's over 100. Right, and that's a plow truck. It's a plow truck. It, that's well, what, yeah, I mean, it has the attachments. That's the whole thing, is there's a ton of attachments for this truck. Right. Right? So from the plow to, um, I've got the whole list here. But, you know what, I have it as a, 2000, a 2004 Dodge Ram 3500. That would make it 20 years. So I have to check, I have to check on that. They were second hand when you got it. Yeah. Would you have to buy all new attachments to no. go? Yep. No new attachments. We want a light for a light. So Ron's been looking at the exact uh, style deck to be able to use every attachment we already have. And that includes the hitch on the in the actual bed of the truck. At town meeting, Ron mentioned repeatedly that that was the only backup prop truck. That's correct, yeah. So and, and we're hoping to get more if employees. So another truck broke down, that was the one that they had to lie on to keep the roads clear. That's correct. And that it was unreliable. Yes. Now it's more so. Yeah. It didn't get any better. Yeah, a year later it's not uh, Just a correction with the warrant. You can clean some meat on it. It's very, very stuck out of it. Yes. Yeah. Article 10. One ton four door short bed six cylinder with diesel B with new V cloud. Got it. Well, there are a lot of other attachments <laughs> that uh, that will be used. Yep, V plows weren't the thing when that truck was in. Oh, because he does have a. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, in the yard you can see he does have. It's not the Right, he's got the one that shoots to the side. <coughs> Here in this meeting, corrections like that are really welcome. You know, don't, don't hold back. Yeah. <coughs> That's the whole purpose of this meeting is to let people practice giving these kinds of presentations. You know, I'll definitely so verify the age. Come better yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, so a contact loader. Can, can you do me a favor and pretend you're talking to me from your house? <laughs> pretend I'm talking from ah louder. louder. Yes, I can do that. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So the compact loader also was on town meeting last year. It did not pass. Um, this is this piece of equipment is probably one of the most critical that the highway department uses. And for example, um, 
pickleball courts, I have no reason to believe the compact loader wouldn't be used to do the work on the pickleball courts when the time comes for that. The, the current issue with the one that the highway department has is the one that is owned by the town is not operational. It is sitting over there, not being used. One of its many problems is that it has a track uh, motion system, not a rubber tire system, which according to the Ron, the superintendent, makes it much less versatile for his purposes. And because the, he does, the highway department does not have an operational compact loader owned by the town, Ron Sweet has a handshake agreement with an, uh, an individual who, own, who owns one and when he needs it, he calls him up. Somebody from the highway department has to go, probably in the truck that Chris just described. <laughs> Two people have to go, they have to get the compact loader and they have to bring it back, use it, and then return it to the, to the person that they rent it from. Not a good use of highway department time. I'm sure those employees could be doing lots of other things for the town other than going to pick up rented equipment from another town. And I've actually seen this piece of equipment in person and it is, it's just, there's so much rust on this, on this thing. It's just, it's just astonishing. And Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. I think there are a bunch of attachments with the compact loader that would be usable on a new one, correct? That's correct, and the new loader would not have tracks, it would have wheels. Yep. So maintenance would be a lot um, cheaper. Yes. Repairs would be a lot cheaper. Current vehicles of 2014. And it would be, a, um, the entry into the vehicle would be different, which I believe Ron felt was a, a safety and a comfort issue for the operator, right? Correct, because yeah. um, a side entry as opposed to a front entry? Yes. As opposed to, uh, uh, no, a, a front, yes, a side entry as opposed to a front because if the loader, if one of the attachments gets stuck, then yes. it blocks the door. Yeah. That has happened to me before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, go ahead, go ahead. So, yeah, the, uh, Ron just touched on this, and I think it's important just to lay it right out. He said it was a bad it was bad choice machine. Mm -hmm. So I was a contractor, a retired contractor. Mm -hmm. I purchased heavy equipment. And, you know, I bought a skid steer. It was the wrong machine. Mm -hmm. We had we had to just make a change. It happens. This is a trap machine, yes. and it doesn't serve its purposes. That is correct. And I think that it's not made for focused on why this particular machine, because it's not really that old. You know, every piece of heavy equipment is rusted. It's rusty, mm -hmm. but it's functional now. For what, for what it was designed for. It was designed for a different usage than we needed. And, and I would have been convinced the vote in favor of the new machine had, had Ron just come right out and said, this doesn't work for me and this is why. It, the machine was functional, it's, it's not that old, but I just wasn't convinced that the track machine wouldn't do what he needed it to do because he didn't, didn't really explain that. Well, well Yes, go ahead. So would you be able to sell this track thing to somebody who could be, use it? Scrap it? Oh, no. That's my question. Is they going to trade it in for the new one? That's an unanswered Are we going to leave it in the junk pile out there? Well, <coughs> no, it, 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 it would be traded in. I'm sure it would be traded in. But, it would be, I would but I don't have a value for it at no, all. No, I know that's it's right. not operational. Yeah. Usually, usually when we replace a piece of equipment that's mm -hmm. not being used, right. it gets traded. Yeah, yeah, there's no space for it anyway. It's so it's so we would definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it's not operational. Yeah, it's not that it, it doesn't work. It's, it's not operational. It's not operational. Well, it's it's not that would be the trade in for parts. The compact? Yeah, they said that. The compact loader but that is done by the town is not operational. That is why the highway department has been mm -hmm. renting one for two years now, at least, right? Yes. At what, least two years. Was it not operational only... last year? No. 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 It, well, it was, but it broke down every time, right? Like, mm -hmm. so he'd use it for a couple hours and it would break down. And I actually saw him using it on our road, on Main Poland Road, when we had the catastrophic flooding last year, and I was not encouraged by what I saw. <laughs> do you know, you know, uh, do you know where the J John, Jan Mag uh, house is? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember last year, it was sitting there for like two months. Yep. Because they were working on it last year and it just broke down. Mm -hmm. So there, there was a concern last year, I mean, people brought this up, like 
why don't we just get it operational again? But I think that's to your point, Nelson, that if it just, mm -hmm. it's like, so like what would it cost to get it operational is one question, but to your point, if it's even operational, it's not serving. It's the not most important service. issue is that it's not functional the right. way the rod needs it. It mm -hmm. needs a different machine, it doesn't work. Even if it's brand new, it doesn't, wasn't the right machine. Okay, yes. That's what, that's what I understand. Okay. One other question, when I was hiring superintendent, if we were going to trade a vehicle in toward another newer one, you had to have that on town meeting for article that says, and it will include the trade of the old vehicle. Is that what's happening today? It's not on the article currently. Is that some laws that was only made up years ago? I, I don't know. I mean. They required me to have it in the specifications of the new or new machine that there was an old one going to be traded in. So is that something that can get amended to the? Yeah, like Tom said, amended um, on the floor. At town meeting, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that legal? Is that a legal? That's not changing. I mean, like, is it a legal amendment because it's not? It's still within the main purpose of the thing. You couldn't say, you couldn't amend it to say to buy a compact loader and uh, something else. Right, it doesn't substantively it change. Well, the what I was told was because when you originally purchased the old one, it took a town meeting vote to purchase the old one, and it should take a town meeting vote to trade it in toward another one. But where is that information, Bob? I, yeah, see, you know. That's what I was told for 20 years. So. Well, the article that's written doesn't mention anything about a trade. It's just a new purchase. So, um, and I don't recall, was that in the article when you purchased the fire truck? I don't recall that being. No, because it's not, they you didn't trade it in the town tent. So no, 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 the one that you just got two years ago? Yeah. Was the trade in in the language? No, because Ron has got no reason. Yeah, Ron, Ron has it. Because Ron kept it. Yeah. The town Ron kept it. The highway Ron department knows. uses it. Yeah. yeah. The old fire truck. Oh, fire Not the truck. fire truck. No, 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 no. You're oh, talking about the pickup. The oh, one okay. that you, the pickup. Oh, you didn't have it before. Yeah. You never had a pickup before. You had the cruiser. You had the person. cruiser, but you had another vehicle that you used. The old cruiser, yes. Right. But yes. that but that was not. That was traded in, yes. But that wasn't in the language of the warrant. I don't. I don't, have think, to think, I don't it think it was. In any case, I can certainly check with town uh, council. Who will be at town right. meeting? I so she can answer that question for us. So, yeah. Are they going to do that with the pickup truck too, though? Just trade it in for a new no. one? The, the pickup truck? One? No, no, they want that as backup. Yeah. But you just said it's in the shop more than out of the shop. Why do they want that? To keep it even. They have other trucks. I don't think that truck will be worth anything trade in. <laughs> and, okay. you know, no, I'm just curious. Right. I mean, they want, they, we'd rather have a backup. Say a for a plow that works and for two days is better right. than no backup right. at all. Exactly. Okay. So, so that sounds like it'd be great for town meeting to have the specifics of can we add the language? Is the trade-in language in the article? And a clear, clear clarity about each of the uh, the equipment requests and what's going to happen to the old equipment. Like, the, you know, like is it a trade-in? Is it a backup? That, that that I would think Tom probably answer that. And she'll be there. Yeah, she'll yeah. she'll be at town meeting, so she can. But but yeah, yeah. just because it's not the warrant language right now, so it would have to be amended. On right, it would have to be amended. Be <coughs> well, they're already at town council for approval, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, and because these already went by town council, if there was a question, I would have yeah. Normally, she gets back pretty. Well, I think I think it would be. Useful, I think, to know if that piece of equipment that's currently not operational, like what the traded value would be, if, right? Definitely. If, if there is any traded value, so I would hope that we have that number from someone by town meeting. A piece of equipment like that is valuable to trade for scrap. For a couple right, but even yeah. but even if, if we know it's like it's worth five thousand dollars, like even that yeah. number is, is but at least a couple thousand, right. 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 at least a thousand dollars for scrap for weight. Right. Yeah. Right, because if questions are coming up here, and we're all hearing answers, there are going to be people in town meetings who didn't who have those same questions and didn't hear the answers. So if instead of waiting for them to have to ask the question, if it can be provided by whoever is presenting about an article, that's helpful. Okay. Um, what was that? That'd be, it's going to be me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, anything, anything else? Loader-wise. 